in any city, in any country. Go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, close your eyes and ask to visit someone who calls himself the Holder of Light. You will be led to a single door leading to a long, winding hallway, and then told to open your eyes. Open the door. The hallway beyond it will be pitch black, but narrow enough for you to feel the walls with outstretched arms and guide yourself forward. If at any point during your trek down the hall, it is suddenly bathed in light, shut your eyes immediately and quickly make your way back to the door you came in through. If your eyes stay open for more than a second, what you will see will force you to instinctively tear them out. If on the other hand, the lights stay off long enough for you to navigate the entire corridor, you will reach another door. Look down. If you can see any light escaping from the crack beneath the door, flee immediately, for what you seek is not there. If no light escapes the next room, then carefully turn the doorknob and enter. The room beyond will be completely dark, aside from a single, dimly lit candle at its center. The faint light it emits will reveal the outline of a cloaked, motionless figure huddled over it. There is only one question that he will respond to. What can protect us from them? See anything else, and the man will tear out your eyes, and force you to take his place under the cloak for the rest of eternity. If you ask the proper question, a piercing scream will ring out from the candle, and a series of lights will illuminate the room, revealing images of the most horrifying thoughts, fantasies, and memories experienced by sentient minds throughout history. Most people cannot handle this event, turning violently insane or perishing instantly at the sight of such horrors. If you should somehow manage to survive the ordeal, the cloaked man will rise slowly and put his hands to your head, turning your gaze to meet his youthful face. Stare directly into his empty, gaping eye sockets, for if you look away from that terrible sight, you will be stranded in this room, forever forgotten by time itself. Do not turn to look as he opens your right hand and places a small round object upon your palm. As that object touches your hand, you will find yourself able to ignore even the most fearsome agonies, unless you are in the process of obtaining another object, for the pains you feel then are far beyond any worldly suffering. Know that even this newfound power will never help you cope with the horrifying images you have witnessed in that room. They will be burned into your memory for all eternity. The eye you hold in your hand is Object 5 of 538. The awakening has begun. They must not be brought together. In any city, in any country. Go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls herself the Holder of Song. You will then be guided to a long staircase that spirals higher than the building stands. At the stairs' summit is a door. As you open the door, a sudden wave of heat will pour out from the hallway beyond it and wash over you. Proceed down the hallway. As you walk, the air around you will grow increasingly frigid. When you feel as if you are encased in ice, you must stand perfectly still, remain silent, and listen. If after a few seconds pass, you hear a baby crying, turn and run. No harm will befall you, but the infant's cry will follow you wherever you go. If you hear it for the rest of your life, count yourself lucky. If and when it stops, your firstborn child will die. If you do not hear a baby's cry, wait for the hallway to grow warm once more, and then proceed to the door at its end. Enter. The room beyond will be a wash in green light. At its center will be an old woman turning the handle of a silent music box. Her legs have both been severed at the knees. When you speak to her, you must look her in the eyes. She hides a spear fashioned from the bones of her legs. Break eye contact, and she will impale you with it and leave you to bleed to death in seemingly unending agony. She will respond to only one question. What was the song they used to play? The old woman will begin to sing in a language not of this world. Her melody will be the most beautiful one you have ever heard, bringing peace and serenity to your mind, body, and soul. You will find yourself vividly imagining a band of carefree children playing and singing, innocent as can be. And within minutes, the scene will eventually take a horribly sinister turn. The children will begin to fight each other, and their conflict will quickly escalate to the most brutal, lethal violence you can conceive of. They will impale each other on wooden poles, disembowel each other with sharp rocks, and even rip flesh from bone with their bare hands. You will witness these children, now merely tattered doppelgangers of themselves, 
spreading death and destruction more horrific than you can ever imagine on your own. You will see a naked boy, drenched in blood, singing with delight as he runs through a hellish wasteland, pursued by unspeakable monsters. They will overtake him and utterly destroy him, the song still issuing forth from his shredded lips all the while. Yet inexplicably, you will remain calm and peaceful even as you watch this unspeakable brutality. When these horrific visions end, an intense pain will stab at your chest. Your heart will feel like it is about to explode. Do not let the agony break your focus, and do not break eye contact with the old woman, lest you invite a fate so horrible that an exploding heart seems lovely by comparison. If you remain steadfast in your gaze, the pain will eventually cease. The woman will stand up, though with your eyes still focused on hers, you will know not how, and place the music box in your hands. The music box is object 6 of 538. When its song plays again, they will all come together. In any city, in any country, go to any mental institution or halfway house you can get yourself to. When you reach the front desk, ask to visit someone who calls himself the holder of the path. The worker, though, will try his best to keep a look of indifference on his face while handing you a key which, as he will explain, belongs to an unused supply closet in the building. If only it were that simple. Upon locating and unlocking the correct door, you will find yourself staring out onto a narrow, winding road suspended in an endless void, the sight only occasionally obstructed by the massive outlines of things best left undescribed. To fall off the path is to be thrown out of reality itself. A nightmarish eternity of inconceivable horror awaits anyone who either stumbles into the void by their own error, or is dragged off the path by the timeless monstrosities that reside on the outskirts of creation. If you should ever feel as if you are being watched while traveling through this piece of oblivion, the best chance you have is to immediately freeze in place and hold your breath. Continue to do so until your audience either loses interest, or moves in to claim you. If the latter should occur, feel free to scream as hard as you want, though your screams will fall on deaf ears. At the end of the path lies a door that leads to a small, dirt-caked room. Propped up against the room's far wall is a heavily emaciated corpse. What's left of its skin is long since blackened with necrosis. Approach it and ask one question. How did they acquire guardians? In response to your query, the corpse will begin to stir. A subtle red glow will emanate from its eye sockets as it lifts its head and begins to whisper the long and macabre history of the holders. It will speak of unholy packs and unspeakable atrocities. Within time, its tail will touch upon every form of evil known to man or god, and a few forms that neither can comprehend. Furthermore, if told the title of any holder, the corpse will reveal that holder's history and the meaning of the object that it protects. Well, almost any holder. The holder of the path will never go into detail about itself. This is because the ghoul hopes that you will not question why it seems to be lacking an object. Truth be told, the ominous glow from within the ghoul's eye sockets is actually the shining light of the object that was somehow sealed inside of its skull. That is Object 7 of 538. Its holder will do anything to keep you away from it. <laughs>